In this video, I'm going to take you through the three key elements of work experience. And at the end, I'm gonna teach you about a secret fourth one that's gonna help you stand out. For each, I'm gonna talk about which is the best to do for that particular section, how to go about arranging it, then how much time you should be dedicating to each of these, and finally, how to best present it so that you look in the best light when you actually submit your application. So let's talk about when we're applying to medical school in a post-pandemic world, what kind of work experience is best and how to get the most outstanding and really the correct type of work experience. Experience. Medical schools understand that it has been hard during the pandemic to get work experience and understand that especially in-person shadowing has been particularly difficult. So they still understand in this time that it is going to be tricky and they do make acceptances for it. In fact, the Medical Schools Council have released this document, which I recommend you read about kind of what to do in the pandemic and trying to get work experience during lockdown. But without trying to predict the future too much, I'm guessing that it won't be long until we're back in a situation where you have the same opportunities that you had pre-pandemic. And as I say, always the most important part of your application is your work experience because that forms the backbone of all your experience, all your ability to talk about stuff at interview, in your personal statement. And then when you do things like the SJT for the UCAT, having that experience is going to put you in good stead to answer the questions well. So the first and probably most important element is that of shadowing. Now this is when you go and follow a doctor around, probably in a hospital for around a week, sometimes more, and you essentially just go around and see what they do and observe their day-to-day -day activities. This is where you get some really good, exciting experience and some insight into what life as a doctor is like. Usually it's best to have a chat to people, get a feel for what their life is like, what they had to go through to get to where they are, and just generally get some really good tips on how to get into medicine and kind of how to thrive as a doctor. This is a really exciting time because you're a fly on the wall in the hospital and you usually get to see some really gory stuff and just really interesting stuff that gets you excited and enthused about pursuing a career and one day becoming a doctor. Now when it comes to your shadowing, the typical recommendation is about two weeks of following a doctor. You can divide this however you want. Maybe one week typically at GP surgery, then another week in hospital. Or you can spend both weeks in hospital and maybe do one in a medical specialty and another in a surgical specialty. And then ideally go into theater and watch a bit of surgery, which is quite exciting as well. It doesn't really matter where you do this. You can do this in your local GP surgery or your nearest hospital. It doesn't matter if you don't go to a really fancy big name hospital, because ultimately when you go to talk about it at interview, people want to see that you've seen the nitty gritty real life medicine that you're going to be practicing rather than the high flying, really glamorous kind of new age cutting edge technology stuff that you won't see very often. Now the hardest part about shadowing is actually to arrange the placement. Some hospitals will have links on their websites for where you can apply to join one, but typically it's a little bit about using the dark arts and finding your skills of perseverance to try and arrange one. You can check out this video here where I talk about the seven step guide to arranging work experience, but I'm about to tell you kind of roughly how I would go about it. So what you want to do is typically treat each department of a hospital, so each specialty as its own target. So you can try multiple hospitals and within a hospital, they will have multiple departments of specialties. So they might have cardiology, pediatrics, different surgeries, so orthopedics, general surgery, plastic surgery, and so on. So they'll have lots of different ones that you can attempt. And like I say, each department is its own target. So what you do is you take your local hospital, you get the main switchboard number that you get off Google and call up the reception. Now the main switchboard, reception, whatever you want to call it, will pick up and say, you know, well, how can I direct your call? So the first thing you do is pick a specialty that you want to try and then ask to speak to the medical secretaries of that specialty. The medical secretaries are the gatekeepers to the consultants and they are the people that have the power to help you arrange your shadowing. Now you might try one and they might be rude or not very helpful, but usually they're pretty nice. So once you get through, you just explain who you are. You say, I'm a student and I'm trying to apply to medical school and I'd like to get some shadowing experience. Could you please help me? And they'll either say yes and maybe give you some emails or they'll be rude and say no, they can't do anything or maybe they'll be polite and say they can't do anything. But either way, you'll get an answer. So from that, what you do then is regardless of whether you're successful or not or they tell you to go away, you then put down the phone, pick up and try a new department. So say you tried cardiology first, then you would try maybe pediatrics and you say, hello, same again, could I speak to the pediatric secretary? And you keep going and you keep trying different departments until you get a handful of prospects that seem promising enough that they look like they're going to result in a successful shadowing placement. You can also do the same with GP practices. So each practice consider a target and then you can just go around calling them until 
until you get what you want. A website you can use is something called NHS Choices, where you can type in your postcode and find out all the GPs and dental practices in your local area. So you try all of those, keep going, maybe even have to go to a different hospital until you get the result that you want. You can even try this by going in person. Sometimes that works even better because essentially what you want to do is when you get on the phone to the receptionist or the medical secretary, you want to put on a charm offensive to get them to help you. So sometimes that's even more fruitful in person and they can see that you're a kind person and want to help you. But also being there in person helps because a lot of the times it's about needing to speak to the right person and they might have popped out to the loo or gone for a coffee or something and just getting them on the phone at that time is particularly difficult. Whereas if you're there in person, you can just go and maybe grab a coffee yourself while you're waiting and pop back in 20 minutes or maybe go and try a different department or a different set of medical secretaries while you're waiting for this person that you need to speak to to come back. Now this is a much more proactive and persistent way of arranging it but it's the one that has the most likelihood of success. You can try by getting people emails you can find most consultant emails on the internet and reach out to them that way but the chances of success are a lot slimmer what you need to realize is that persistence is key with this even in pre-pandemic times when I was trying to arrange this I had to try dozens and dozens of people until I finally managed to arrange a successful shadowing placement but once you've arranged it it's a kind of one and done type thing maybe two and done if you're doing two one-week placements but then you can relax look forward to it and just make sure that you get the most out of it I'm just in the middle of making a really important video on the four preparation phases of applying to medical school. But in that, I talk about the importance of keeping a diary. So make sure that you do this because you think that you're never going to forget the thing that you see. But when it comes to interview day, you forget all those little details that make that story really pop and kind of really make it stand out. So make sure that you write them all down. And then as you're about to write your personal statement or you're about to go and sit your interview, that you read that diary to refresh yourself on all those little details that make the story so magical. The next element is volunteering. Volunteering is really important because it shows that you are willing to give back to the community, you're self-sacrificing, usually in a role where you're caring for somebody else and are willing to give up your time to help others. Where shadowing is usually more of a one-off or maybe two-time occasion, Volunteering is something that you're going to be doing regularly and consistently over a period of time. So the way that I would look at volunteering is think of things that are either close to your heart or are really going to stand out or are caring for other people. One of the best things that you can do is help out caring for the elderly in a local care home. Usually that's restricted to over 18s, so it's not available to everyone, but it's something that if you can do it is a really standout achievement or thing to have done and put on your personal statement. However, if you're not 18, fear not because there are plenty of things that you can do that are going to help you stand out. One of the places that I'd recommend to start is the Royal Voluntary Society, where you can literally enter your postcode and look at all the opportunities that are available in your local area. Otherwise, you can just simply Google your local area and volunteering opportunities and look at all the stuff that's available. However, this is one area that I would actually recommend that you have a think about what causes and what things are close to your heart and do something that you're a bit more passionate about. Because not only is it going to help you have more longevity in it, it's actually going to shine through that it's something that's meaningful to you and will come across better when you talk about it at interview. Because when you start looking at it through that lens, you really set the stage to do something truly outstanding. Some of the students that I've been working with on my Future Doc Elite Coaching Program have even set up their own charities and we're working with them together to help that. But not only does that look amazing, sound amazing, and it's really a passion project for them, it also practices loads of skills that people want to see when you're applying to medicine. Things like taking initiative, having organizational skills, being able to work with loads of different people. It's just really one of those fantastic things that sets people apart in a really great way. Other people who want to do something but don't quite have that amount of time end up setting up things like charity events or things that they can do for fundraising. So of course if you're setting up your own charity and it's something you're passionate about and you really want to shoot for the moon in that sense then of course spend as much time as you feel you need on that. But generally the idea with volunteering is that you're doing enough to tick that box and have something to talk about at interview and at least show them when you speak to them that you can have an intelligent conversation about it and kind of prove that you've actually done what you say you've done. But at the same time, whilst maintaining enough time and space to focus on the elements of the application that you need to focus on, as well as all the exams that you probably need to do, whether you're in school or at university. So really that means an hour a week, a couple of hours of fortnight to dedicate to this is ample to have all the kind of ammunition that you need to be able to hold your own when it comes to interview. Because essentially that's all the end goal is. You want to be able 
to have an intelligent conversation about the volunteer experience that you've had. The flip side is when people talk about things like, for example, if they say they've done the St. John's Ambulance and actually haven't done it at all. And then when they get asked simple questions at interview, they can't answer them. They look ridiculous because they basically get found out for elaborating or lying. And that is their application thrown in the bin. The third element is paid work. Now, a job differs from the other two in that it offers two things. The first is that of responsibility. While the others are important and obviously they expect you to turn up and all that sort of stuff, shadowing is kind of you're a fly on the wall and you're not really contributing and volunteering, you're there for a couple of hours. But having a job is where you're actually relied upon and expected to be there on time regularly and kind of showing up with your full self. The other thing is that it offers transferable skills. Now, people think that sometimes some of these skills are not related to being a doctor, but I can show you how some of them, even if you're working in a shop or whatever it is, will actually be really useful and show some traits that they want to see in future doctors. People really underestimate the skills and traits that are developed from a paid job. For example, if you're asked to handle money or given the keys to lock up at the end of the day, that implies a certain level of trust that is instilled in you from the boss. Or for example, maybe you wait tables and it's not that uncommon to have people complain maybe about the food. Well, that draws a lot of parallels with hospital. People are often upset in hospital for whatever reason. And the skills of kind of challenging communication situations that you can transfer across to your skills of being a doctor are really useful from that experience. So really don't underestimate the value that a paid job offers towards your medical school application. For universities like Manchester who do the non-academic form or maybe Keele to do the roles and responsibilities form, they say that you cannot include your shadowing experience and they want usually three or four roles from things outside of that, so volunteering and paid work, and they want to see how you've gone above and beyond to show traits of a good doctor. So with that said, I think in this area, the best job that you can get is a hospital-based one. Again, if you're over 18, you can work as a healthcare assistant, and that, at that age and level of qualification, is probably the closest thing you can be to being a doctor without actually being a doctor. Here, you're responsible for caring for people, you have loads of patient contact, and it is just a fantastic job when you're applying to medicine to show experience and dedication to the course. Especially if you're applying as a grad, this is one of the best things that you can do to make your application stand out. However, if you're under 18 and you obviously can't get a job like that, what I would still recommend is that you apply to any hospital-based job that you can. Something like giving out the food or cleaning is going to give you a lot more patient contact than you think. In fact, funnily, this is how I got into medicine myself. When I was 16, there was a job of handing out the sandwiches on the ward to patients. And actually, the only reason that I did it was because it paid well. And I started that in the summer. And around that time, I got my GCSEs and actually realized that I'd done a lot better than expected. And it was only as a result of that job from talking to patients and actually kind of quite enjoying the hospital environment and all the different people that you speak to that I thought about medicine. I kind of thought that it's a possibility. So then not only did I have the grades, but from being in the hospital, I had a really strong advantage over the other applicants. And that's for a few things. Of course, from the job itself, I got loads of experience. But one of the other things is that I kind of instill in my students on the elite coaching program is the concept of proximity. Now, proximity is the reason why if you want to become an actor, you move to LA. If you want to be a tech entrepreneur, you move to Silicon Valley. Because what happens is when you're in the right environment, you create the opportunity for serendipity to happen. Because just by putting yourself in the right environment, you are setting the scene for good luck to happen, for opportunities to strike. And that is exactly how I got all the experience that I needed to get into medical school. So as I say, just from that one job that I took purely because it paid well. I got so much patient contact. I even joke that probably in that job, I got more patient contact than I do now as a doctor. I also managed to arrange my shadowing experience off that and got really good shadowing just off the back of that job. I also arranged my volunteering off the back of that and that was super easy to do. So just from that one piece of good luck, loads of other lucky things happened, loads of great opportunities presented themselves. And I basically built my entire strength of my application from that one job. So I strongly recommend that you can consider looking for a job in the hospital, even if you're just kind of, like I say, doing the cleaning, ideally something patient facing. So giving out the food is something that's quite useful if you're young, but anything that puts you in that pocket to be talking to people and for opportunities to present themselves. So the places to find these jobs are either on nhs.jobs, the website, or if you want to try my kind of proactive, more aggressive approach, you can call up the local hospital and ask to speak to maybe the housekeeping department or whoever's in charge of the healthcare assistance and see if you can speak to 
them directly about getting the possibility of an interview. Again, make sure that you manage your time appropriately by doing what I would say is the minimum viable amount to have something intelligent to talk about, but to not encroach too much on your preparation time and your exam time that you need to be focusing on. But as I say, enough so that you've kind of gained some experience, you've seen some stuff and you've got stuff to talk about. Another tip is I would recommend that when you apply and when you're talking to the people at interview is don't tell them that you're applying to medical school because that usually insinuates to them that you're going to be there for just a few months to get all the experience that you need to get into med school and then you'll leave them for dead and never see them again. But in terms of getting the balance right for the amount of hours that you put into these things, I would recommend that you have a look at a document by Warwick Medical School and it's their work experience guidelines which is kind of serving as a minimum requirement for what they want for their applicants. Now this document with it being Warwick is targeted at graduate applicants but whether students are graduates or not or whether they're applying to Warwick or not I still recommend that they use this document as a benchmark but as I teach on my elite program that if you want to make sure that you get in if you need to kind of reach here you might as well aim here because you know that's what's going to make you make sure that you get in. So. Warwick are probably the most demanding when it comes to work experience. So if you make sure that you're meeting their threshold, then you're gonna be fine for absolutely everywhere else that you apply to. So the bonus element that I was talking about that's gonna help you separate yourself is that of what I call extracurricular, further reading, prizes and achievements, all bundled into one. This is just another element where you can gain insight and most importantly, show commitment. So I'm gonna talk about a few things that you can do and some that are really, really stand out that are gonna almost act as a ticket to medicine. So any talks that you can attend, maybe by some of the rural colleges or the universities that put on about medicine are going to give you some really good ideas about what life is like as a medic. Then there are magazines and journals that are going to help keep you up to date and show that you're really dedicated and interested. So these are things like New Scientist magazine or the Student BMJ journal or maybe even just reading BBC Health News just to keep up to date with everything. And of course there are loads of books you can read. These are probably the common ones that you've heard of and are a good read to give you an idea about medicine. But the three things that are going to help you stand out most and separate yourself from the crowd are those of research, summer schools and essay prizes. Now on the Future Doctor program we talk about the particular ones that almost like I say act as those tickets to medical school. So if you want to find out a little bit more about that I recommend that you watch this video here and also if you're applying in September and are still in the preparation phase here's a video that talks about the four phases of preparation and everything that you should be doing right now to make sure you optimize your chances. So I'll see you over in one of those videos and thanks for watching.